and we're in here. I don't have like a cool beginning of how I start this podcast, no, so it's I, literally just jump right in. Yeah, no, I, I'm uncool, so that works for me. You're very well. cool, man. Yeah. You got the cool tsunami scrub, yeah, though. Well, like I, that, I, I thought I'd try to do something. To, to, I mean, I need one brandy. of those so I could go to the bar afterwards and some girl thinks I'm a doctor. Be like, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know that I think the, the general <laughs> thing is like I just want to wear the same thing all the time right. so I don't have to that's think genius. about it. That's yeah. genius. So. That's that's this the, works for me. That's the genius at work, man. Um, so usually how I start the podcast is I, I'm not one to hype anybody up. I want you to introduce yourself, how you think you should be introduced. So um, I'll let you do that right now. Um, I don't know. How Your I'll, name first. Maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. yeah, uh, right I am technically Dr. Duke Fu, but don't expect me to save oh, your so life. You, you are if, the doctor. If something okay. actually happens. <laughs> um, I, I did my doctorate in like uh, in pharmacy, so uh, specializing in nuclear medicine. So that's like my educational background, um, and I got an MBA also. So uh, lots of schooling. Where are you Where are you from? I good good question for Asian American. Yeah, so I'm I, I'm actually I was born in Toledo, Ohio, which is not okay. very exotic sounding. Right. And then uh, I grew up in Southern California. My family is ethnically Chinese. But uh, they all migrated or fled, really, from China to Taiwan during kind of the whole communist takeover of, okay. of China. All right. So you, like, rep Taiwan or you rep China mainland? Uh, I, I, I would probably think, or like, Toledo. Politically, <laughs> politically more, like, towards Taiwan. But, okay. you know, I'm... It's hard because uh, my parents actually live in Shanghai, so which is interesting, um, and they think it's they think living in China is great, and I'm sure yeah. there's great parts of it. You know, it's like there's no perfect place, like there's no perfect country, right? That, right. that every everyone's doing everything that's perfect. Right. Um, you can say that you know China's done a good job economically, which they factually have, but you know, I, I, I'm not gonna leave the United States. Like I, right. I like living in the United States. I like the freedoms that it has. Do you visit there? Do you go there? Oh, you... I visit my parents all the time. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, you know, there is a big difference there. It's, it's, like, Shanghai especially is like New York pretty much. And it's, it's a, it's a city with 28 million people in it. So, um, so wait, when they came back though, when it was all clear, like, I mean, is it, how, How's how's that? Like, okay, it's cool to go back now. Like, uh, you know, so my, but my parents moved to the U.S. in the early seventies. Ah, uh, okay. So they probably they've spent most of their life in the U.S. How um, did someone from Shanghai go to Ohio though? Like, where? where... Um, you know, first they <laughs> first they actually went to. It's shockingly, my 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 father went to college at BYU. That okay. was his first place, and so he. I guess pretending to be Mormon and like somehow got went to BYU. Was that Brigham Young? Was that Brigham, uh, Brigham Young yeah, University? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So um, and then so and then but he my my his my brother was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So um, wow, yeah. And yeah. then and then he moved to uh, Ohio to start his like uh, to start a business out there. So. I I uh, spent a lot. I went to University of Pittsburgh, so I know kind of that area, and yeah, and it's a uh, little remoteness from the coast a little bit, you know. It is remote, right. uh, you know. But I, Ohio has a lot of all stars, man. A lot yeah. of all stars came out of Ohio. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, there. Uh, sports are big in Ohio. So I mean, Dave you, Chappelle's from Ohio. So yeah, that, that, Dave Chappelle. That's pretty cool. LeBron James from like, lots of lots of people from Ohio. There's a lot. It's so, coming up. Uh, the reason why we're here, though, is to celebrate Asian Heritage Pacific Islander Month here in May. Something that we didn't really grow up with, bo though, before, you know, and, and I was thinking about just like um, even uh, growing up, I didn't we didn't at least my personal like I didn't get to see many uh, Asians in like, you know, Mr. Miyagi's and Bruce Lee's and there weren't a lot of and, and you know, my angle really was like hip hop. So um I didn't see a lot of Asian rappers out there or anything or or doing music. But uh, today, uh, the reason why we're here is to kind of celebrate and, and really kind of just discuss that because I don't really think people think of Asian Americans in cannabis in general. Um, and so I like to say, and I don't think I'm like the first generation of it, but like weed was not really accepted by my parents or I don't think generally in Asia or anything like that. So, I, you know, working in this space right now, I feel like kind of a, um, a leader in that because we are the where it turns to become more accepting because, mm -hmm. you know, we've 
obviously have found out that cannabis is helpful for us and uh, it helps people in a lot of ways versus, you know, um, and I would say this very stereotypically uh, in Asian culture, at least, you know, growing up, it was, you know, study and be this and be a doctor. And uh, thankfully, at some point, my parents weren't they didn't really crack, crack a whip like that. Yeah. Uh, but even working in this space now, uh, it's still a little bit taboo. And, and I, I don't again, I don't think you think of Asians or Asian Americans technically in this space. Um, so we're here to celebrate you, first of all, and, and, and thank hey. you, you know, to get to know you. Uh, but do you even think about that at all? Or is it kind of like a non-factor, like, you know, that you are a representative in this space and a successful representative in this space. Uh, and you could be doing a lot of things, uh, but you're in cannabis. Yeah. yeah um, so I, I like most things I approach in life. I'm very probably science based okay. thinking about things. So, um, you know, Going back to what happened, like historically, you know, I actually used my degree. I started a whole bunch of nuclear pharmaceutical facilities in the United States. And I was, I was, we actually, we were the largest independent nuclear pharmaceutical chain in South. What is nu- nuclear pharmaceuticals? Um, so Sounds, we manufacture wow. and compound radioactive medication. Oh. So, um, you know, parts of it where we're eluding generators to make, you know, technetium, which is a radioisotope, or we have a cyclotrons where we spinning atoms and smashing them against targets to make them radioactive. So. Yeah, like really cool science <laughs> stuff, right? Yeah, sounds, like super nerdy. I, I did so cool. I, it sounds cool though. I, I did the the uh, the Asian American wet dream. I became a doctor. I did the whole thing, right? <laughs> like they, uh, so uh, and then you know I started this um, you know uh, this nuclear pharmaceutical chain. We sold to Cardinal Healthcare, and they were like nineteenth on their Fortune five hundred at the time. So wow. I was like thirty year olds, and I like I did it. I I climbed the mountain. I thought, and then. Um, I stayed on with him. I just kind of got bored. Um, went from a small company to a really big one. And I was like, what am I? I was kind of searching for what I'm going to do next. And then this medical marijuana came up in Nevada. And I was like, you know, I know how to make medicine. Like, well, I should apply for these things. I think I'd be good at it, which was So like were the, you using it at all, like, no, uh, recreationally? or was No, just, I went nah. to college at USC. So, you know, people are partying. And there's a lot of people are doing. And, you were studying. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, I probably partied too much my first year, but oh, I actually is. got serious and studied afterwards. Um, and then, um, you know, everyone's, a lot of people are smoking weed. I just, I'm kind of, uh, if I were to choose uh, some kind of drug of choice, it'd be like some kind of upper. So it never really, like, philosophically appealed to me. Right. So I didn't really try it until until I really got in the industry. Um, right. Um, but yeah, I really looked at it like, oh, that makes sense. It's medicine. Like, like I should, I should. I should try my hand at this whole thing. Um, and that's kind of what and I eventually was like the first president of MedMen. So that was like wow. my first kind of foray into cannabis. Um, and I met, I met Adam and Andrew kind of early on in the process of applying through licenses in Nevada. And so, you know, Adam is the owner of Hardeen, just for any, just to reference. Oh, uh, this is a, this oh, is a different, different Adam. Adam. Okay. Yeah, okay. Different, different Adam. Adam. All right. Yeah, cool. Different Adam. But, right. um, um, Yes. But, um, and then so I, I got into kind of Men Men and then, you know, that started taking off. And I, I, I left because for a lot of reasons. But um, well, when you were at Men Men, like how many Asians were in that space in general, would you say? You know, more than I like think. It, you mean in like the legal market or the the because it's in California, so it's <laughs> like it was there's like a, everything. there's a blurred line there. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. There's a lot of ethnic minorities in cannabis, especially in the quote unquote traditional market. Right. Um, especially a lot of um, yeah, a lot of different. Uh, there's a lot of different people in that market, and I would say typically there's a lot of immigrant people in like in that in cannabis for whatever reason. Um, and it was always a little bit fringe, but, um, but you know, I, I wouldn't say, um, until the legal market came around, you know, it's cause I think to be successful in legal markets, the, 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 the trick is to get licenses and the companies that are good at getting licenses, like all the big MSOs are do well because not because they have, are better at operating dispensaries. They're good at getting licenses mm. and doing the political game, which right. is critical to get those licenses. So they understand that, and that's how 
they're successful. But if you see if they're a lot of these MSOs that come to really competitive markets, they don't do as well because they're not necessarily the best operators, but mm. they do well at getting licenses, right. especially in non in markets like Florida where they have limited licensing. So, right. um, um, I forgot my point, but yeah, that's uh, there weren't a lot um, as far as Asians specifically in the market, but there you know there was there's a few scattered within that, but. You know, and this is 2014, 2013. So there was like Colorado was like the only market that was legal at the time. So right. everything else was like a mishmash of like, like those those uh, what is it pre pre ICO licenses in LA. And this is when like um, um, like the um, they, they you'd go to dispensaries and they, they'd have like dab bars right there people <laughs> pressing flower rosin right there and you can dab at, at the at, at the dispensary it was really? a di- oh totally different time um interesting to like and the, you know i really tried to go i went to colorado did a whole bunch of looked around all the 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 a whole bunch of facilities there to kind of understand what the market was and then at that same time, like Washington was also legalizing, so that was kind of one of the early markets. So we're just trying to gather as much information as I could and understand what the market was because, you know, the medical. Foolishly, I thought it'd be like medical, medical, which is not really what it is. It's kind of like a recreational that people find like medicine, kind of OTC like. I would say they mm. they like discover oh this works for me, which. Right is as long as it works for people that's all that matters so how'd you end up here in vegas then with so you came to vegas with that like hey i'm gonna work on medical and no or, i i came to vegas specifically for the nuclear medicine uh side of it so i was just here this is my home base for the nuclear medicine business and when i sold it i'd stayed here and then i would say mm-hmm. yeah after after three years of kind of earning out my contract from the sale of the company, I kind of just not fell in. I chose, I very distinctly remember it because I was sitting on the couch and they had this story on the news that said, oh, medical cannabis coming to Nevada. And I was like, you know what? Like, this is my, it's my wife now, but it was my girlfriend at the time. And I was like, hey, you know, I should, I'm going to do that. And then next thing you know, like, you know, I'm like president of MedMen all of a sudden, like, like a year later. So um, it was uh it was. It's been a crazy ride. That's wild. Um, I mean, that's a testament to uh, like what you're bringing to the table here, which is pretty incredible, man. Um, I, yeah, not- you know, it's 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 somewhat just not foolishness and not knowing, but you know, I think just doing stuff and being like. Well, it's cool to hear that you're pro- like, you know, a lot of people I mean, cannabis are like stoners before, you know, they're uh, like, oh, I love weed or whatever. I mean, obviously, I, I don't think I hang out with enough doctors or anything like that. But um, so just like your approach to it is very cool because it's 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 unique. And it, again, it's a testament to like the work you put in and, and the mind that, that you have and, and built. And, uh, and yeah. I, I, well, I thanks. Um, I think, you know, yeah, I approached it as I, I could recognize like I recognized that it wasn't what people were making out to be. And then I recognized that there was some, that people were actually using it for medical reasons. Cause even in my staff, there's a lot of people that discover it for, it helps them in some way in life, right. you know, right. um, whether it's, you know, some people have um, like Tourette syndrome or something like that. And they're like, Oh yeah, this helped my Tourette syndrome. Or, you know, you hear typical things like epilepsy and things like that. Um, but yeah, you just hear all the stories of it helping people's people's lives in c- certain ways. This is probably loaded though, but why why is why why do you think you know medical or or maybe even federal like why are they making it hard if it clearly is helping people? I think in general, the medical process for what you would call medical in the United States is just not set up for. Um, substances like cannabis are typically set up to disc- to examine mol- monomolecules that are extracted and that purified. So it's just not set up for something like cannabis, which has a whole bunch of different things. Like for example, like one of our products, like the HDE pen, right? We, you, you can extract, you can extract, take out most of the THCA. You can even take out most of the terpenes 
And then that that product that's low THC and a whole bunch of other stuff like flavonoids, sterols, a whole bunch of things, right, still has a really pronounced effect that even if you took out the two components everyone talks about, you you would say, well, it shouldn't have affect you as much, but it has like it's like much this much more interesting than just THCA or THC right. alone or something else. So there's a whole bunch of things happening that we don't understand. And that matrix, as far as a pharmaceutical, is complex and really right. difficult to understand. So it's <clears throat> hard to standardize. So right. I mean, people can literally grow it at home, but yeah. it's probably harder to make the Tylenol at home or something. It's just not built for <laughs> that. It's just right. difficult for, and you know, and that's why I really got interested in Asia. Like, and that's why I've done a lot of work in Thailand was because what people call like alternative medicine here in the U.S. is called traditional medicine in Asia. Mm. So, like, if you go to, like, a place like Thailand, they actually have a path for natural medicines, and they call that traditional medicine mm. versus, like, pharmaceutical medicine. So you can actually get stuff approved that, like, cannabis or things like that, that are herbs and things like that. The U.S. does have a biological drugs, but there's only two drugs since, like, the 2000s that have been approved that are actual biologic, like, uh, botanical drugs. Right. Um, so it's really hard to get it passed through that process, and... So that, I think that's why everyone wants to think of like pharmaceuticals as the evil whatever, but they're just like a lot of people. They're just trying to maximize their own profits, right? right. So, um, so it's like yes, if you consider that evil, but that's kind of the basis of capitalism to a certain degree. So right. uh, it's it's it's, and every bit company within that space because I know some of these people they're they're different. They have different objectives and different things that they're looking at, right? And, you know, frankly, if they wanted to get into cannabis, it, everyone's afraid that since they or rescheduling it, that, oh, big pharma is going to take over. It's, it's just not the case. They could have they could have gotten whatever drugs passed already if they wanted to. Right. It's just not worth it for them. Uh, let's. Uh, so right now you're with uh, GT, right? Yes. And uh, like, what, what's what's happening now with uh, with you, doctor? Was it? You know, I, I you know, we we've been. I would say hampered traditionally by I am horrible at self promotion and promoting, and it, it reflects in our business because we do don't do a lot of marketing and we just like but focus. The, but a lot of you know, but the product speaks for itself. Yeah, though, you know? well, thank you, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I hope it does, and we really try to make sure those things um, you know, uh, are are executed on the highest level possible, um, and obviously, you know, really. Leaving Medman, coming back and really building the, the the business from the ground up. Like I did, I've done everything. I've stayed up to two a.m. harvesting plants. I've trimmed, and we've done all the different aspects of the business. Mm -hmm. And so um, it really taught me a lot, and I'm glad I got that education to. And in in every single process, it really made me appreciate the hard work that goes into it, and like how much effort uh, goes into growing the plant. And, you don't get good anything if you don't good grow good plants. Well, it's like you know, just uh, hearing you, I, it gives me way more respect to all of all the parts that help you know the company. So it's not just the green; it's the marketing. It's it's you know how it's cultivated. So there's like so many great job opportunities, really, if you if you think about it in that way as well. Yeah. Um, and so what what an amazing plant, right? What an amazing plant. It, you know, it's the the diversity and like we call a chemotype, which is like <clears> the <throat> chemical expression of it and how that translates to smells, how it tastes is it's pretty amazing. It's like it has one of the largest palettes of like any plant I've ever seen, which is really I know, it is remarkable. And the you know, I do think there's a real actual medicinal side of it and you know, I hope it – the problem is, like, if you look at all these – the drugs that have been produced through the FDA for whether it's, like, dronabinol or any of these, like, derivatives or even, like, epidiolex, which is actually from the plant, extracted from the plant, CBD, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's just CBD. Um, as a monomolecule, CBD itself – does stuff and it's fine but it doesn't work as well as just like taking in like the whole the plant as it is in a lot of instances mm. um so yeah the, the 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 like 
in this instance, I think nature has figured out better than you can extract it and make it into a certain thing. And, and I don't want, and, and I do want it like, it's, you know, consuming cannabis isn't a cure all for everything. And I don't want to like make it seem like that because I think that's irresponsible and it's bad for kids because it affects your brain development and those things are bad. So people shouldn't, you know, should avoid it as children. Um, but you know, it is, especially in adults, like I drink, I do other stuff. It's like humans have done drugs throughout <laughs> history. You got to accept that. And just like, like, Hey, like as far as, harm it's probably it's definitely low on the list of things that you could be doing to yourself um right. and you know i think it's important for we have people to be able to relax on a very simplistic basis right. um it's important so, so um i feel like um well let me just say this so for someone who may be more traditional and still you know be programmed under the fearful cannabis plan and blah 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 what would you say as a doctor for someone who uh, maybe curious about it. Um, you know, how would you explain that to him? Um, I like mean, I, and not I, necessarily I, pressing them to smoke yeah, weed, so, you know, yeah, so I don't I, want it to from, sound like from, that, but just having cannabis as an option for, uh, from, so you know. I, I would explain it like this. I would say people have, you have an uh, endogenous endocannabinoid system that is, you know, that is your body produces endocannabinoids already. So you have, cannabinoids in your body okay obviously taking in cannabinoids is a you know like from smoking or whatever causes is a lot more than you normally produce okay but it's in your system already so uh, to say like uh it's some foreign crazy and crazy thing is just not factually accurate right okay if you want to like from a base i've never heard it like coming from this angle so it's very it's very cool keep going um and i you know I, whenever I say, Hey, if you want to try it, don't like, don't do edibles. Cause that's like always the worst experience. <laughs> Tell so, me. I've been smoking uh, weed forever and yeah. edibles is still no, uh, it, a crapshoot, you know? And like, you know, I guarantee, <laughs> I almost guarantee everyone who's tried it, who has had a really strong negative opinion about it always says, is that it? You know, that's always a response. Cause it's like, it's not, what people think it is it's the, very i'm gonna yeah. see a pink elephant no you're not yeah. you're there's definitely <laughs> like i've definitely gotten more drunk and done stupider things than than uh, smoking right. like weed so you know I, I yeah i just don't um it's you know it's just a lot of propaganda throughout the years and it, it's sad because really from a scientific standpoint you know, even when they outlawed it during the Nixon administration, they had a report. They actually had them do a report on the the, the actual medical dangers of it. Right. And the report said, you know what, this isn't that bad. And then they're like, forget it, I don't care. And then they just, they just said, hey, we should outlaw it anyhow. It was like the whole scientific community had been had a realistic assessment of the risk of it. And it's right. always been relatively low compared to a lot of other things. Right. It's been this strange propaganda that, you know, obviously it's definitely had some, you know, ethnic kind of insinuations that have always been really unhealthy. Um, right, right. And um, so, you know, like like all things, you know, it takes time to change. Things aren't ever going to fix be fixed right away, but I think we're moving in the right direction. And, you know, rescheduling it is great, and I think – from a global standpoint, it's going to make a difference. I think it's going to change. Everyone's going to relook at this, and I think it's going it's to change. And it's happening, which is yeah, it's you amazing. Know, whatever people want to say, you know, like the, you know, the one of I, – I talked to our partners in um, in Thailand, you know, the, the biggest thing that we think we've did, like, you know, Thailand was able to deschedule cannabis, which was take it – because right now we're rescheduling, taking – schedule one to schedule three they were able to just remove it like the plant from from the whole schedule altogether so it's treated nothing different than like a tomato basically a tea yeah yeah right right which you know on that one like kind of instance it you know there's several thousands of people that got to go home to their families because being incarcerated because of that right, right? And, you know, of all the things I've done in this space, like, I feel good about that, at least. Like, someone got to go home with their family, which is, like, Love I don't that. know. I did something, right? Um, whether or not all this stuff, you know, the men-men stuff was 
cool it was a cultural thing you know we were the first unicorn in the cannabis space we ipo'd for 1.8 billion dollars all that stuff sounds great but you know that's i don't know that's at some point in time like money is like like it's it's a game almost at some point in time you make enough mm. and you're happy and right, like right. like the the extra money just makes you more stressed out almost and you like start buying stupid things and like i want to feel more stressed shit no i'm just kidding uh (laughs) but yeah i just want to say this and there's probably not enough time um and i and i'm very curious uh but thank you yeah you know i feel like you 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 did a lot of work in this space and in your own way you're a pioneer you know like filipinos were always like so proud like oh he's filipino this actor's filipino that guy's a filipino but you know coming under the you know the asian umbrella and everything uh, I just want to thank you for, I, I know at some point it doesn't matter. Like you're doing the work, you put the work in re- regardless of race or whatever, but just to be able to celebrate um, our peers in this industry that have been doing it. And, um, you know, uh, some Taiwanese or Chinese or, or, you know, whoever's looking up to you, you know, could be like, Hey, I could, you know, be in this space, you know, maybe someone around, you know, somewhere is watching this, and they're like, hey, you know, I could be in this space even though it's not necessarily um, welcomed by my family or overall this country is completely legal. But, yeah. man, I wish I could go hours in deep with you because it really sounds like you, you put in your time and your work. So I just wanted to thank you for sharing your story, sharing your space. And I definitely don't think this is like uh, those, those won't be your impacts in the industry. You know, I, I you probably find, you know way more spaces to impact so thank you so much hopefully yeah no i appreciate you having time i appreciate you know hardine and all the um they've always supported us and we've always tried to support you guys as much as possible and i you know part of this is really having good partners and meeting a lot of great people in this space so I no really i love that it. i love that uh just one more thing last but not least someone is coming to visit vegas they're coming from a state that is not legal they want to try out you know local brands or some what, what makes tsunami and GT, what makes your guys' product, um, you know, worth worth getting with the millions of products that are that are here? Lots of products, yeah. yeah. You know, I I think, like we kind of touched on that. We really try to grow the best cannabis possible, and whether that's you know, sort finding genetics and continue to 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 up our game with that, but really kind of on the manufacturing side with some tsunami and those products, we're you know we are doing processes that probably people don't do as much as because for me our goal has always been retaining the product as pure as possible and it's like most natural state so that means like hey we need to stabilize the product and do all these things to reduce you know i guess nerdy as like hey we need to reduce the off-gassing pressure of like terpenes to try to 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 lock in the terpenes as much as possible and Mm -hmm. keep it as fresh as possible to all the little things like our jars are ridiculously expensive <laughs> and see. it's like, and it's like, it's like, <laughs> does it, and, we, and the problem is we've tried tons of other jars. They just don't keep the material as good as possible because like having fresh canvas is it's ideal. Nice. And that's why, you know, it's, it's harder in this right. market because it takes forever to get things on the shelf, you know? And, and everyone's comparing it to the state right next door. So, yeah. you know, it's like good flower in Vegas um yeah I, look temper like humidity has a lot to do with it right, right. it's like it's just dry here so <laughs> right. things that people complain about being dry i'm like it's dry that's like you, you, you can't put it in some kind of like like perfect environment here all the time it's just tougher so and then uh, but yeah I, you know we we make as all the efforts that we do to try to present the product as 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 pure and as perfect as possible as and just try to not to mess with nature um and thank, thank you for that. Thank yeah, that, for that. that that's all we can do. And, try, you know, make sure, obviously, like, I will tell you, on the black market, a lot of products have, we've done a lot of testing, tons of pesticides and all these things, bad things. So, mm-hmm. like, I will tell you guys, like, the black market has a lot of dangerous products, whether it's, like, they, even if they give you a C of A, it's, it's a lie. <laughs> like, like all those, all the C of A's and black market guys give you, it's all bullshit. It's like all bullshit. I've, 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 we've tested all these things from a whole bunch of different places on, uh, it is, I wouldn't consume a lot of that stuff. And a lot of the people are, you know, have their toes in both worlds a little bit and they just like, Oh, this isn't working. We pass it on the black market. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's just part of the nature of, 
how this industry is right now and we got to deal with it. It is what it is. And, you know, we try to do the best job of, um, you know, uh, staying within regulations, doing all the things that we're supposed to be doing. But, you know, at the end of the day, the safety is still most important. I want, you know, you, you know, our, re- our regulations here in Nevada are, are really tight. And I think at the very least you'll get a safe product. And then, um, I think that's important because like, it'd be, it's a shame to like, feel like, Hey, I'm taking kind of something that's somewhat medically geared. And it's just like had a literal poison in it. Right. And it's like, cause <clears throat> yeah, a lot of the, the, people don't understand some of this, these, these pesticides, a stay in your body. And then like, there's like cyanide produced is when you like, like when you heat it up, there's a yeah, whole bunch of nasty mean. stuff. It, Man, that's a lot. Thank you, yeah. Dr. Duke Fu. Thank you so much. Uh, my mom is still a little weary about, you know, me working cannabis, but I'm going to show her that I interviewed a doctor. Okay. And, and that Great. will be Yeah. You. Yeah. She, I'll talk right. to her. You'll Give talk her my to phone her. number. We, <laughs> I'll be like, we, mom, we, 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 yeah. here's yeah. the doctor right here. And yeah. I'm I'm over 40 years old, you know, and I still got to like, my, my mom yes. caught me smoking weed on the ring camera last time I was home. She's like, what are you doing? And But, uh, you know, being with Wiz Khalifa and working for Hardy, and, uh, she's... She's, you know, she's it's got a, a no, few Christmas she, presents yeah. that come from the, you know, the weed side. Is she like, this is a real thing now? Yeah. Is she like, she's a nurse, so, oh, okay. so uh, yeah. you know, she she respects. She actually asked me to bring her, home, you know, home CBD stuff, so she's, you know, it's, she's getting it's, there. It's, it's, it's the same receptors. It's just, it's they're all just molecules. You see that? That's, what, that's what I got to say. You know, it's all, all yeah, those yeah, big yeah, words, all, man. Yeah. Dr. Lots of big Duke words. Fu, thank you so much for joining us thank here at Hardeen. Uh, I don't think this will be the last, and I'm hoping one day I can come check out your facility. Oh, yeah, and, for sure. And, yeah. Uh, you know. It'd be great. Yeah, it'd be good. Thank you very much. All right, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Hardeen, Las Vegas.